in the second one, um, there were 692 kids. They were from first to third grade this time, so we're following them uh, ahead um, a year and a half. Um, we collected the baseline data one year, and then we collected two waves of data in the spring and fall the next year. Um, there were uh, 391 children in the um, program school, and there were 301 in the um, control schools. I think there's six program schools and five control schools. Um, and the control schools were, the program schools again were proud schools. They were proud program schools. They'd had the program for some time. And the control schools were all souk schools who had not yet adopted the program but were interested in having it and actually did adopt the program at the end of the study. And again, you see the same thing. Kids in the um, program schools are reporting more victimization to start with, but you see a fairly rapid decline and we, expect, we would expect this decline would keep going down. Um, if we were able to continue to follow these kids, whereas the control schools, again, have this kind of flat line that we would expect to continue to be quite flat. Um, so this does, given the numbers of kids, the numbers of families, the, the involvement of people in this study, this does give us really, I think, some confidence that um, the program does make a difference. If we were to do the next step, we would get a school district, we're still looking for school districts, um, that would be willing to work with us to have the program randomized into some schools. So some schools would say, you'd say you'd have 20 schools, um, 10 schools would get the program, but we'd just pick them out of a hat. So if you volunteered to be in this research project, um, you would be as likely to be a control school as a um, program school, and as a control school, you might get, you know, $1,200 worth of other books and um, not this program, uh, and you'd have to agree to stay in that kind of category for three years. And we did that with the souk schools. We um, basically gave them quite a bit of funding for the library books, and we get, they used it as a fundraiser for their <coughs> school. So it did make sense to them to, to be control schools, and that kind of um, about that kind of um, place or the being a control school is desperately needed for evaluations. Um. It's the WITS program is in District 61, 62, and 63, all under the funding of the raised by the Rock Solid Foundation. There are a number of seed schools here and there. So there's a couple in Hope, a couple in Mission, a couple in Vancouver, um, a few in Alberta, Queen Charlotte Islands. Um, and we have just received this grant from the Public Health Agency of Canada to disseminate it Canada-wide. So we're really looking for um, partners to be part of the evaluation, but also just part of the, um, the dissemination research. We're interested in like, how do you do this? How do you get it out of here? Um, disseminating programs in Canada is such a challenge because every program is chosen by individual principals in individual schools. Can you imagine how many principals there are in Canada? Um, and it tends to be that, that they don't know about the program, they don't know how to access it. Um, and this is more of a community development kind of program. So you've got to get the police on board. You've got to get the parents on board. You've got to get the schools on board. So um, we're really working very hard in terms of trying to study the mechanisms for disseminating it. Um, we do have probably a, um, schools to be involved in the random control design evaluation. Um, we really are looking for some other schools to, to do this. Could you disseminate it through educating the counselors would be one you know, would they champion the program? Um, could you disseminate it through uh, getting a parent group on board? Um, but we want districts. We don't want to, like, do one school at a time. There's too many schools and I'm not going to live long enough. <laughs> you know, it's uh, the trials of dissemination. And a lot of our new materials will make it possible for people to, to access the program online entirely. Like, you'll be able to become a, um, an accredited WETS teacher online. You won't need to come to my workshop. So we're really trying to get it more disseminated. The research um, and the program are all publicly funded. So there's, 
every intention and every effort to get it out to places where um, it feels like this is public knowledge. This is not our program that we're trying to sell. Um, we're trying to disseminate public knowledge, publicly funded knowledge. Um, so relational victimization, um, this was the physical victimization lines for the second wave or for the second uh, assessment and this is the relational victimization. Again, starts higher, um, comes, comes down fairly quickly um, in terms of the amount that's being reported and again we expect this trajectory would go down and that one would continue to be straight. Um, we do need a, a fourth and fifth wave of data. It would be, it would be great to get uh, district to cooperate in collecting that data. We do believe, though, because this is um, of the way the statistics are done, these are not just means. These are actually changes in individual children's scores over time. So it's a little more of a, a pattern or a trajectory that you're getting here. You can't fully claim what I'm claiming from three waves of data. You need a few more. But um, the expectation is that, on average, kids in the program will decline in terms of their victimization reports, whereas the kids not in the program don't change. Um, and I can make that claim from these data. Um, and the fact that they both end up at level two um, it is a concern, but it's more the trajectory that we're interested in, the way these data are analyzed. But you're right, we need, we need more waves. And they all had a program. Everything has a program. Everyone has a program. They were either step programs, Lion's Quest, um, uh, I don't know what else is out there that's popular at the moment. You probably tell me. Um, the care, the val there's values, clarifications program. Um, some of them have EBI um, for kids who are really aggressive. Um, they, there's restitution programs in some of these schools. Um, so it, the program went alongside other programs. Is, and I think. I think that's what the principals would say, too, that they wouldn't use it exclusively. It goes well alongside other programs, kind of creating a community language. We also looked at respons social responsibility. We're still trying to get a handle on this, but we had the teachers assess um, as they would ex below expectations, meet expectations, above expectations on these items of social responsibility for each child. So friendly and caring, looks for chances to help, et cetera, plays fair. And um, again, we saw differences in, um, in, the, in the two schools. In the control schools, they were lower. Um, in the um, program schools, they were a little higher. We're trying to, and they were stably higher at each point. So in this, in this situation, they're, these are the kids who are reporting less and less and less victimization, but they're also being scored by their teachers as having higher, social level, higher levels of social responsibility. So again, we have some data suggesting that um, there are some evidence for the programs, that the program is working. And we do have all that raw, raw enthusiasm kind of data that, um, that we we evaluators sort of deem as the Oprah endorsed programs, you know, so the, the police will, will say this is a great program, um, principals will give testimony that this is a great program. We, we tend not to rely on those data as, as much, but I think they're also really good indications that you can implement it, that it is feasible. So.